places Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective Smeared faces Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? This is the Weird yeah. Perspective Podcast. I am your host, Derry Cooks, along with my co-host, my friend, Mr. Raymond, Raymond Woods. Woods. He in yes, the sir. building. <laughs> Thank y'all for joining us today. Uh, on this podcast, man, we hope to motivate y'all. We hope to inspire, encourage, and challenge y'all to follow Jesus, right? We stand on biblical principles everything that we do here it comes the foundation is from scripture on this podcast we talk about everything from church to parenting to money to politics entertainment the culture relationships relationships um, you know yeah everything that you can think of we talk about it and more on here on the podcast and so um this episode is going to be a little bit different um, today because I am getting interviewed by Mr. Ray on the topic of fatherhood. So this is going to be fun. Uh, Raymond, if you guys don't know, he is going to be a father. Let's just clap it up for, for black fathers, y'all. Let's clap it up for black fathers. His amazing wife, Marianne, she is pregnant. And so I'm honored that they want to talk to me about being a dad and fatherhood and just all the things that um, I've experienced and I went through. I've been a dad for 14 years. My oldest is 14 years old. And so she going into high school. Lord, help me. Um, Prayers up. Prayers up. Prayers up. Um, And so I'm honored. And uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Mr. Ray. Let's get it. Yeah, I mean, I guess um I guess you can look at this as kind of a, a selfish self-requested episode, but but not really, but um when we were talking about stuff we wanted to go over, I just said let's have an episode about fatherhood. And um I really when we were thinking about when I was thinking about people I wanted to interview, I'm just like why don't I interview somebody I know who who's a good father? And, you know, I've only known Derry um, now for about almost a year, but I've been able to see and see and observe him and look at how he works with his wife and how he works with his kids. And because uh, I, I didn't I just don't want to ask somebody because they got kids, you know, having kids doesn't make you a good father. But the reason why I want to ask Derry these questions is because from the time I've spent observing him. Um, I'm not saying he's perfect in this, but I don't see a lot of the wear and tear of parenting that I see on other couples. Um, when I watch him and his wife, when I watch the way they maneuver, you know, pe- people watch you. They, they watch how you maneuver and how you do things and they take notes and they study. you. So whenever I would see Derry, I would never hear him bad mouth his kids. I would never hear him saying like, oh man, life is terrible. I can't believe, you know, I'm a can't believe I'm a dad and all this stuff. I would never, I would never hear him say that. When him and his wife are together, you know, we we had a double date, a double date the other night, and they were talking about their kids. You know, they, you know, they talked about some of the trials and some of the different things that were challenges, but it was never from a place of bitterness. It was never from a place of I hate this, at least not that we could see. And so, you know, I, I say all that to say I'm not just asking Derry to to comment on this stuff just to do it. I'm asking him because he he looks as as if he is someone, and I believe he is, that parents from a place of not leaning on his own understanding. Him and his wife don't parent from their own understanding, but they lean on God. And once again, I'm not saying they're perfect, but they, they've already left the station. You feel me? So I'm, I'm excited to interview. It's going to be a little bit more of a looser episode. I just have, I have a series of questions. About seven questions that kind of run the run the gamut of everything that I could think of when it comes to fatherhood. A lot of objections I hear, a lot of uh, concerns I hear from other to be fathers, other people who are considering being fathers in the future. 
So I, I jotted these questions down um, and I'm going to just launch into it in a second. Barry, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So now at the Weird Perspective podcast, you know, before, before we do anything, we want to make sure that we're biblically sound. And that we have that foundation. So the first thing I wanted to ask Derry, and I, I prompted him on this ahead of time, but I'm like, can you give me three to four scriptures that are kind of like a foundation or, or they form a thesis for how you approach fatherhood? You know, they, they, they can be something that you refer back to constantly when, uh, when, you're, you're, when you're faced with challenges in your, in your parenting and how you approach things. So three, three or four scriptures that you can give. Yeah, absolutely. Um I have uh do I have I have five, but so yeah, I, I've as I said earlier, I've been a father for uh five years. I mean no, fourteen years, my bad. I have five scriptures. Well, I've been say, a father for, <laughs> for fourteen years. I wasn't saved when I became a father, even though I grew up in the church and things like that. But um, as time has gone on, there's been, you know, I had to learn how to become a father. Um, it wasn't just like, hey, man, your father and I didn't boom. Like we just get all this knowledge and, you know, information on what to do. Um, I, I really had to like go through things, um, especially like not having God in my life at the time. Um, I was, you know, in a place where I was I was wilding out a little bit. Um, I was in a, a sunken place. Um, and so. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have it all together. And then I didn't grow up with a healthy father figure, somebody that I can imitate being uh, a father after my father was was absent and really inconsistent in my life growing up. And so and I didn't have that like, man, this is what my father would have done. I didn't have those moments. I couldn't like go to those memories like, man, what would dad have done in this situation or what would you know such and such would have done in the situation? I didn't have those moments. So I, I literally had to learn from uh you know, men who were mentoring me, um, and then I, uh, and seeking out knowledge on my own reading books. Um, Tony Evans was a big thing for me. Um, I learned a lot from his books and he had a, a series on like manhood and biblical manhood and fatherhood. He has devotional. So just taking a lot of information and things from that has really helped me in my, um, approach. Give me two seconds so I can yell at these kids. Oh, we well, we seeing parenting in real time. This is what's up. Go ahead. Oh, he had to he had to blank out the language. He cussing them out right now. No, <laughs> well, we definitely gonna edit that out. Um, and so I have five scriptures here. Um, the first one that has uh that I learned something from will be Psalms uh, one hundred three verse thirteen. It says um. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Now, the the, the the top part of this verse is, as a father has compassion on his children, is is powerful because it lets us know like, that God has compassion with us. We don't know. We're not perfect children by any means. And he continues to have passion on us. Um, and, you know, the Bible says that he disciplines those that he loves. Um, but we never feel rejected by God. We mm -hmm. never feel like, man, I can't go to God. Even after he's uh, disciplining us and he's dealing with us, um, it's, a, it's, it's with compassion and we always can run to him no matter what. And so mm -hmm. I try to, you know, do that with my kids where sometimes I have to be, you know, very direct and very uh, what well, can feel like harsh in the moment. But it's always from a place of love and there's always compassion that comes um, when there's when we have to discipline. Uh, the second verse that um, I've uh, used is Ephesians uh, chapter six, verse four. And it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, Amen. bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. Now, exasperate, it, it means to irritate or frustrate. Um, and then there's another verse in Colossians. You know, these are letters that Paul wrote. So he wrote to the Ephesian church and he wrote to the Colossians. And it pretty much says the same thing. It says, uh, this is Colossians 3.21. It says, fathers, do not uh, embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and bitter means 
to to cause someone to feel bitter or resentful. Right. And so when you read both of these verses, you can kind of like put them together. It's, it means it's like, in other words, don't correct your children in such a way that they will become uh, bitter and that they would feel that you are being like unfair with them. Right. Um, you want to encourage you want to be an encourager with your children. You don't want to be a, a discourager. Right. Let them know that you're proud to be their father. Right. And, and, you know, and always bringing them up in, in the word um, and, and bringing them up in the word. That leads me to the next verse, which is Proverbs uh, 22, verse six, which is uh, train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart, depart from, from it. Right. That's and so to train up a child is to nurture and to care for them. Um, you know, the training and the instruction uh, has to do with teaching and discipline. And so a lot of people in this rock my world, when I first heard it from from Tony Evans, it was man, as fathers that we have the primary role and responsibility to raise up our kids. It's not on the woman. I know like we live in America and they really be like, hey. Women, I'm going to go work. You raise these kids and I'm going to just make the money and pay for everything. And that's not what God had, uh, how he intended for us in his mm. word. Um, going all the way back to, you can read about that like in Genesis uh, 18. But every commandment that that God says about training up kids, it goes to the father. And I was like mm. blown away when I when I started to study this and I realized this. And I was like, what? And so... Yeah, we're first. Like we're supposed to provide, we're supposed to protect, right? We're supposed to, and we're also supposed to train the kids up. It's our responsibility. It's not on the women, right? Not saying that they don't have value or that they don't have a role in training up the kids, right? Obviously, they do as mothers, but yeah. the training, the discipline, those things uh, come from the father. And so uh, it took me, you know a while to adjust to this and, and learn how to do this. And what does this look like? Because I grew up, you know, my mom was, was single, even though she remarried a couple times, I didn't have any type of relationship with my stepdad like that. So um, my mom raised me. So that's all I seen. That's all I knew. Uh, my dad, my dad, he whooped me one time because I got in trouble. Um, and then I would, like, oh, this is what gets me, gets you to come around. So I'm always get in trouble because this is the way that I can get you to actually spend time with me, even if it involves me getting a whooping. Um, That's true. So, yeah, but as fathers, we're the primary disciplinarians, right? We're we're responsible for 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 training our kids up, man. We're supposed to teach our kids uh, biblical truth on a level that they can understand it, right? And uh, we must do. No, I just wanted to say, like, one, let me, what was, you had one more scripture, right? Uh, Yeah. No, because I just wanted to say, like, well, no, get, get the last scripture, because I had a point, I had a point to make about um the middle two you gave, but go, go ahead and do the last one. Okay. Um, but Yeah, Um, my, my whole point is, like, man, we, we supposed to do this not in love, I mean, uh, in love, not in anger, right? Uh, and God disciplines us in love, as I said earlier, right? Correcting our behavior. If you're doing this strictly off anger, a lot of times it's not going to be, uh, the kids are, are going to feel that and it's not going to come off as, as loving and you're not going to correct their behavior, right? And then I, so I'll give you an example. My kid acts up in school, they didn't do homework or they get some F's or whatever. And I just whoop them and I don't, and then that's it. I don't talk to them. I don't explain why I'm doing this. I don't do any of those things. Um, it's not going to breathe about real correction um, in their behavior. They might ultimately get good grades because they're like, I don't want another whooping. But that, but that's not how God disciplines us, right? He mm -hmm. disciplines us with love because um, it's what's best for us and it leads us closer to him as we understand like why he's doing these things there's love and there's compassion and so um the last verse is proverbs 13 24 whoever uh, spares the rod hates his son but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him and so these are just some of the 
foundation verses of uh, fatherhood for me that um, I always have to run back to and I always have to uh, seek to understand, especially uh, the first two or the the second and the third one, Ephesians 6 and 4 and Colossians uh, 3.21. I always have to go back to those and remember because sometimes my kids be doing some stuff and I'd be like, man, look. And then my wife is always like, hey, don't exasperate these kids. And I'm like, you know, she keeps me in check. So uh, those are, yeah, those are the verses. And, and I'm glad you you circle back around to those two because when you, when you mentioned um, it was Ephesians and the Colossians one, mm-hmm. and they referenced like not exasperating your children and not being unfair to them and like you can even go into not having unfair expectations uh, and just not just not being bogus to your kids. And I think about that. God never. In terms of fatherhood, it's like I notice that God will never tell us to do something without modeling it himself. Mm. And I remember when Jesus was like, you know, like if your child asked for um, for a fish, you're going to give him a stone. And it's like God, and so like it's the same way with God. God is going to give you good things when you ask when you ask Him for it. And when I think about those scriptures, a lot of people think God is unfair. A lot of people think God is out to exasperate them, and He He doesn't care about them, and that God is cruel and is disciplined. And I sometimes think that I, I sometimes really struggle with that. And um, in terms of my relationship with God, but that's just a reminder. Like if God thinks enough about earthly children to say to earthly dads, do not be unfair to them. Do not discourage them. Even when you discipline them, don't, don't make them think like they can never, like they, like they lost your love or like you don't love them anymore, or you're just being unfair. It's the same way with God. God isn't unfair. God isn't out to discourage us. God isn't out to like beat us down and harm us and to just be morally superior. And, and we can never, like achieve anything. So that, that's something that really, it, it's still kind of renew, renewing my mind in that. So th- thank you for, um, for, for, for using those scriptures. That really yeah. helps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and so I just, you know, I'm always, as I was saying in growing as a father, like I have five kids, so it's, everyone has a different personality. Everyone has their own like issues. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. And as a father, man, sometimes like it could be overwhelming on like, how do I deal with this? Right. Because the way I discipline or I talk to one kid, one kid I could look at like, you better sit down. The other kid, I have to go over there. You know, I have to raise my voice or, you know, I, um, so I have to be a little bit more aggressive with, with that one kid. Um, and so, Everybody is different, you know what I'm saying. But one, the, one, it's like one kid you may have to be a little more, a little bit more tactful with, you know, and ha- and how you deal with them, you know, versus another kid. Yeah. So, you know, and everybody's at different ages. I got 14, I got 12, I got 11, I got nine, and then I got three. <laughs> so everybody's in different phases of of their life, and uh, yeah, so those things can be somewhat overwhelming but um i thank the lord that i've had any craziness from like all the kids at one time is usually like in seasons so it'd be like this kid's dealing with this okay this kid's dealing with that okay and then you know i can manage it all so i feel you now i mean to that point now you, y'all just heard that Darius has five kids so I'm, I'm gonna launch into these questions and um just about fatherhood. And since Derry mentioned he has five kids, the first question I have down kind of ties into that because whenever I hear people talk about maybe becoming maybe becoming parents one day, they always say like, man, how how will me and my wife ever find time for each other? And so that's literally my first question. So with the five kids that you that you have, or, or first off, can you name all five kids right now? Yeah. He said, can you name my fat kids right now? <laughs> yeah, my oldest is Tamaya. Second oldest is Tihani. Third oldest is Tahili. And then we have Dorian. And then the youngest is Dashiell. Dashiell. I, I, I like that. Shout out to the Incredibles. 
and to uh and to and to Dashiell Hammett, the the mystery author from the 1950s. His name mm-hmm. was inspired literally from The Incredibles because he ran in my wife's stomach. It was nonstop moving in there. So, yeah, dear Lord, well, man. Okay, um, in that case, my my question still stands. How do you find time? You and your wife find time for each other with all these kids. Blessings that they are. Yeah. So, uh, thank the Lord we have amazing oh, in laws. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. I don't know if they're no. I'll just uh, when you watch back the episode, you'll hear what I said. Never mind. <laughs> so we have uh, amazing uh, in laws. Well, I have amazing in laws. My wife's parents they get the kids every Friday. They love their grandchildren. And so we've been blessed to have um, a weekly date night, which is on Fridays. The kids, uh, when they're during the school year, they go right over there after school. I don't need to pick them up because it's two blocks from the grandparents' house and they can go over there and uh, they kick it with their grandparents on Fridays. And then me and the wife are able to go out and uh, kick it, have fun. And so we we take advantage of that and we make it a priority. Like, you know, date night is a priority. Um, And then now that my kids are older, um, you know, God forbid that for some reason they can't go over there. My kids are old enough where they understand my oldest can hold it down. If me and mommy want to get away for a couple hours, we can. But 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 I like like the word you use priority. You prioritize it. Yeah. I mean, it's a must. I tell every couple. Uh, it's important to have date night. It's important for your kids to see the parents dating as well, right? They yeah. always just see you work, work, work. You never make time. I think a big uh, misconception in marriage is that people, once they start having kids, they make the whole entire marriage about the kids. And that is not mm-hmm. how, that's not the will of God for marriage. The The will of God is the husband and wife come first. Your relationship comes first, and then the kids. It's not oh, we got the kids, and then we'll we'll you know make time for us, or we'll try to. If you guys marriage is failing, then it's gonna be real hard for you to prioritize and manage those kids in a in a healthy way, right? They they suffer they suffer by result. They like suffer just. by result exactly, and so. You have to prioritize your marriage, have to prioritize spending time. If you're fortunate enough to take trips, take trips, spend time with each other, right? And Mm -hmm. so it's going to look different for certain people, depending on your capacity and, you know, obligations that you have. But in our, in my case, me and my wife, Fridays, um, especially now during the summertime, and we could drop these kids off at one, two o'clock. I'm actually about to drop them off right after I get done with this podcast and then it's date night. Um, so they're going to be over there and they could be over there all day and mm. they have room to run around, play. But this is the day that they have with their grandparents. And so sometimes it's three hours and sometimes it's six hours. And then me and the wife take that time and we go for walks. Uh, we might go grab a coffee, sit down and talk. But it's it's just us spending quality time together. And so it doesn't always have to be some like big extravagant um dinner you know five star dinner look i ain't got money like that so we're gonna go to dunkin donuts we're gonna look in each other's face uh we might even we might share a meal you know what i'm saying like but the whole point is is to spend time with your spouse right so Yo, just make real, time that, that, make time for that that saves money and calories i mean me, me and marianne have done that before um no no that's that's no that's good too like like all me and my wife, we had a lot of marriage counseling pre pre marriage, and we heard from a lot of couples. And it's like the one constant we kept on hearing was date night, more than communication, more than um, more than anything else. We just we heard that so much. Date and people look at us and get real serious when they said it. Date night, and so um, so yeah. I mean, I, I'm me and Marianne, we we tried putting that into motion now before we even have like our child so that once he comes, he won't like rock the boat in terms of what we already have established. So so that's good. But now along, along that same line, um, finding time for each other, how do you find time for yourself? 
you know, like how, like, in, or in, in modern terms, how do you do you? Because this is something I actually was, was real concerned about even more than me and Marianne finding time for each other. Because like, I, I know that like, if we work together, we can make that a reality, finding time for each other. But as an individual, you have hobbies, you have interests, you have careers, you may, you may have a ministry. And I think you hear a lot of times like people feel like they get lost in the marriage, um, especially when they have kids, like, you know, they just become the mother or the father and they may have aspirations to paint or to, or to make music or to learn a language or to get that degree or to, you know, go to cooking school or to, you know, have a carpentry business or whatever. And like, man, how do you find time to still do you as a parent? Um, yeah, it's um, before I get into like myself, I would tell and encourage any couple before you have kids. Right. Um, when you get married, take a year to two years of just being together. Without having babies, if you if you can, unless y'all just y'all talked about it, and y'all really want a family diving in, but I think it's to great benefit to at least wait a year before you start having children, because it gives you the opportunity to get to know each other first and Amen. foremost before you know you're able to learn how to become a husband in you know different seasons and seeing her whether she's sick, healthy whatever, you know, she goes through, man, like I'm able to see my wife, you know, be who, who she is and learn how to, 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 to love her and pray for her and meet her where she's at. And we're able to do all these things together. But when you just have kids, maybe you had kids before you was married or you have kids as soon as you get married, man, now your first year of you being married, she's, you know, a lot of people get pregnant on a honeymoon. Um, now you don't you don't know what kind of pregnancy she's gonna have. So remember, her body is changing. She's growing a person inside of her. So what you might think is like, man, we finna be out turning up, like we married. But it's like, you know, she might be sleepy, or she might, you know, have some type of cravings, or mood swings, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. So first and foremost, take some time to really just enjoy one another and get to know one another and learn how to be a husband, learn how to be a wife um, before you dive into now I have to learn how to be a father or I have to learn how to do both at the same time. Um, People have done it obviously, but I just, you know, just, I think the healthy way and a really good way, a practical way of of finding how to do both in those roles uh, is taking time to learn how to be a husband and then being a father. But anyway, to answer your question directly, as far as uh, finding time to do my, to do me, it's uh, it's really man understanding the the season that I'm in in life, and so first and foremost, I always ask man, is the thing that I want to do, whether it's a hobby or whatever, man, would the Lord be pleased by that? Like, am I doing something that's in the in the will of God? So whether it could be something small like reading a book, right? And some people are like, man, it's just reading a book, man, it's no big deal. You could read a book, um, but like. Is, is is me doing my hobby, is that going to cause friction in my marriage? Is it going to take away uh, like certain times? How can I make time for myself? And so for me, mm. I have now been blessed. This wasn't always the case, but now I've been blessed to where um, I can work and I can take my kids to work with me if need be. Um, and then doing this podcast, it doesn't take a ton of my time, probably an hour, maybe two hours of like prep. And then when we actually do the podcast, podcast is something that I wanted to do uh, for two years before I even started doing it. And so it wasn't just like, man, you know what? I'm going to do this podcast. But it's like, fam, I worked. I was a truck driver. So you're talking 10, 12, sometimes 13 hour days. You can't Mm -hmm. come home and do a podcast. I still have to be spent time with my family. I still have to be, you know, deal with situations. I still have to manage the home. I have to make time for my wife. And so for me, it's making sure that the two most important things are done, which is spending time with my wife. Is this going to stop me or hinder me from being able to spend time with my wife? How much time is this going to uh, uh, take from the, the me being a husband and me being a father? 
And so putting it all on the table, uh, you work, you work a regular 40 hours a week. Okay, cool. What time do you work, man? Is it, do you get home? Are the kids still, uh, um, awake? Can you still spend time with them or do you work like second shift? And then when you get home, they're already in the bed. And so you got to take really the weekends is the time that you really get to like play with your kids. And so you got to think about all these things that are in your life. And then like for me, like I couldn't do this podcast. I couldn't really do it justice until um, like season one. I was still trucking during season one. And so that was, man, we had to do it Sunday night. Um, a lot of times I had downtime in the truck, so I was able to prep for an episode because I had downtime sitting in the truck waiting to be unloaded, stuff like that. Uh, so I was able to make work and my wife was okay with it. She was okay with me doing a podcast. I wasn't, I wanted to do originally like three, three YouTube videos a week. Can't do that. Can't do three, can't do three videos a week with the podcast. That would just take a lot of time. Also... I'm a deacon at my church, so I serve at my church. So thinking about ministry responsibilities, you know, obligations, how does all this fit in? So it's real, real important to have really good time management, knowing when to say yes, knowing when to say no, um, being um, selfless in that matter where it's like, this ain't the proper time for me to pick up this hobby. Um, This ain't the, you know, I need to, you know, later I'll do this. I've, I've been wanting to go back to school for a long time. And I just haven't had the time to go to school and work, you know, and do the things that we want to do. Now, hopefully um, in the near future that I'll be able to do that, like go to school, I still be able to work and still be able to even do um, this podcast, YouTube thing. But right now it's looking like like something is going to have to take a back seat if I wanted to go to school and really, you know, be intentional proactive about making sure my grades are good and all those type of things. So something's going to have to like be scaled back and what that is right now. I don't know. And then there's also seasons of where there's going to be some sacrifice, right? So there, there are seasons of where, man, I might have to preach a little bit more during this time because pastors on sabbatical or sick or something happened, but I have to now step in my, my ministry responsibilities are uh, a lot. And so I need to sit down with my family first and foremost and talk to them and tell them, hey, the reason why daddy is studying so much is because, man, I have to preach. I have to, you know, teach God's word to people, blah, blah, blah. Um, Let them know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just be doing stuff like, hey, yo, I'm out. I'm going to the gym. And then you gone for two hours and then you come back, you tire, you just go to sleep. You ain't spend no time with anybody. Um, That was my life while I was trucking for a little bit. You know, I would come home. My kids had a good hour of daddy's time before I was like, just sleep, just knock, knocked out. And it wasn't healthy. Um, it wasn't healthy for my relationship, which is the reason why I made the switch in careers to do what I do now. But um, yeah, it's all about, man, prioritizing and finding time. And is it is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Is it going to cause issues? Uh, can you wait to do that? Um, or, you know, really sit down talking to your wife about what this will look like for our families. And so that might be a sacrifice of time. Somebody's going to miss out on some type of time because we only get a certain amount of time in a day anyway. But if you're very open with your family, your spouse about what you want to do and why it's important to you and just really having that conversation, then, you know, it's cool. This podcast was God told me to do this. I uh, uh, procrastinated for two years because I thought, man, I needed a certain background. I needed a certain mic. I needed a certain setup. I needed to do this and do that. And then, so I procrastinated for two years. And then uh, I finally was like, man, let me just do this thing, man. It was really just on my heart. And God was like, I told you to go. I ain't tell you worry about no background. I ain't tell you worry about no lights, no cameras. I just told your butt to start talking about the things that I want you to talk about. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to do it. And my wife knew that this was a thing that I wanted to do and that it was heavy on my heart. And so now I'm doing it. Yeah. Um. No, I know I said a mouthful, my bad. I know I probably threw you off. No, 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 I'm not gonna lie. Like, like it's like whenever you hear the word like sacrifice, whenever you hear like you're like, dang, man. Cause I mean, no, those are realities. I mean, I guess first, you know, it's always it's always a good thing that that keeps you in check when you recognize you should always submit your plans to God. 
you know, you should, like your hobbies, what you do, you should always like put, give that first and foremost to God so that he can direct your steps. You don't, you, yeah, this is good for you to do. No, you don't need to be doing that right now. Um, so, I mean, that's a good reminder, whether like, whether you married a single or whatever. And then, I mean, I, I, I really, I mess with what you said about time management. I mean, that's once again, these are, this is good advice for whether or not you married or single, learning how to manage your schedule, learning what needs to be on the back burner versus what needs to be primary. Um, I would say too, like learning how to say no to things like, you know, like, no, we can't, you know, we can't go out this week and no, we can't meet y'all for, for coffee this, this week and stuff like that. So I guess, um, <clears throat> no, go ahead. My bad. One thing that I didn't add to that, um, is that I prioritize, um, my days with my kids. So this, my mentor, he actually gave me this, um, idea, but because I have so many kids, man, it's hard to spend, uh, qual like, you know, really intentional time with them because one day I might get home and I might have to be intentional with dash or the next day I get home, I might have to deal with you know, uh, my two oldest girls or something. I had to help out with homework. So what I started doing was uh, Daddy Day, which is the day of their birthday. So um, my oldest is April 13th. So on the 13th of every month, that's me and her time. So when I get home, when she gets home from school, we go out. Now, it doesn't have to be like I'm spending money or you got to take them to the arcade or whatever. It could be just like, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's talk. Let's go get some food. Or like in our case, I'm about to start teaching her how to drive. So it's just being intentional. Where it's just me and her. And that's it. And I do that with all the kids. TJ's birthday is September 23rd. So on the 23rd of every month, that's my day with her. And then, you know, the, it goes down the list. Dorian is the 29th. So the 29th of every month, that's me and his day. Lily's is the 6th. Uh, no, the fourth, and then Dash is the sixth. So those days, I look, I'm going to be with my kids. And sometimes it's two hours. Sometimes it's four hours. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes I might have to move it to the following day because we might have something going on at, like, work or something like that. And it's like, I cannot not cancel that. You know, like, we do slam. So if it falls on a Monday, it's like, uh, you can come to slam with me, my oldest, right? But it's still not me and her. That's still me around people working and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, well, let's do it Tuesday or let's do it the day before. Let's do it Sunday. Um, so being intentional like that when you have a lot of kids and you are and you have a lot of things that you're trying to manage, that's a good way to spend intentional time. And it shows your kids that, man, my dad prioritized spending time with me, right? I just don't have to spend time with him and my siblings all together. He taking time to, it's just me and him. and We just go. We do our thing, so. That's good. Um, okay, let me move on. Um, question three. I may combine some of these two uh, for time, but were you ready to become a father? Like when you first became a father? Oh, yeah, I was ready. I was I was good, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, Psh, father thing? I got that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I was waiting for that. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Absolutely not. I wasn't ready. In my mind, I thought I was ready because of what I seen and the things that I was around. Like, I'm like, yeah, I could take care of a kid. Like, you know, it's, it's easy. Um, but no, mm -hmm. you can never be like ready to be a dad. Number one, you don't know what type of personality and characteristics that this kid is going to come out. You don't know if they're going to be a crybaby. They're going to sleep through the night. So you, you got to learn all these things and you learning on the fly. Right. Mm -hmm. So you might be like mentally, like, or, or in, a, in a good space, like financially, I can provide, I have a good job or career. Okay, I'm good in that area. But those things don't make you a father, right? It's um, learning how to love in, in in troubling times, right? This baby don't poop in your face. You change the diapers, it's like, I don't even want to change this baby. Like, all my kids have gotten me either with poop or throw up. Like, it's, it's going to happen. No matter, it could be, you know, Dash was the, he's the last one. You would think like I'll be this expert diaper changer. And I could change a diaper real good and fast. I can even change like in church, you won't even know. Just <laughs> but sometimes they ain't done and you think they done and then you trying to dodge. You're like, oh snap. So 
it, they gonna get you in some type of way, or you gonna get threw up on. I was playing with my daughter one time, my first, uh, my oldest, and I was like, ah, oh, daddy loves you. Did <clears throat> throw up right in my mouth, and I was just like, <sighs> what? What what do I do situation? But no, it's it's a learning experience, man. Um, just how to care for them, how to meet them where they're at. Um, you know, it's just a new season of life, and every kid is different. So you might be cool with your firstborn, and now here come the second one, and it's a whole different personality, it's a whole different person. And I was like, I have to learn how to love this person, and I have to learn how to deal with this person's issues and stuff like that. And so, um. You can never be ready to be a, a father in that aspect. You can mentally be ready, you know, having money and stuff like that. And even I'm going to be a dad. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm going to actively pursue learning what it is to be a dad and what it means. Um, that's good. But like the physical, like the, the actual, was the, the practical part of it? Like you, you got to learn how to do that. I mean, to, and, and to that point, um, it's funny you said like, there are just some some things you can't plan for. Like you you don't know what type of personality God has given that baby, and so that that's something I learned with marriage from hearing a lot of couples speak, mm-hmm. uh, and that's something I'm learning about parenting from hearing a lot of parents speak. Is I've heard people from every demographic, um, different ages, different um, different ways of d- different financial means, and just all these different ways of living. And they had varying levels of success. And, you know, the the couple that got married, that had a bunch of money. They sometimes would have like just a really rocky time. And, you know, they may have even gotten divorced. And then a couple with less money, but who was more on one accord, you know, just had a much better time. I'm not saying they didn't have issues, but just being there for each other. And so same thing with parenting. You know, I hear kids who grew up and it was like, man, like we didn't always have like the newest this or that. And I'm not saying those things are wrong. I mean, like, and God, if God has blessed you and like, you just been a good steward over your money, like, like more power to you, but just like the foundation of who you are as a couple or as a parent, you know, it can't be measured. It's it's something that's like, can't be measured. It's, it can't be measured in human terms. It has to be something like, just a God given foundation or a God, a God acquired foundation of who you are as a parent or who you are as a couple, you know, cause money, money may ever flow, you know, this may, this may come and go or whatever, but just, if you just have a solid foundation for who you are as a parent that goes beyond those things, that's what I figure out so far in this relationship. And that's what I've learned from my, from other couples, you know, the money was good some years and money was bad blah, blah, blah. But just, we were there for each other and we saw each other through a lot of hard times. So yeah, Yeah, that's good. Now, now, okay. So were you ready to become a father to that point? Let me actually, um, let me combine that with the question I have here. So what was one of the biggest learning curves or what was like a big mistake that you made early as a parent and you had to unlearn or you had to like grow, grow past that? Um, uh, so there were, there's two and I was trying, I was going back and forth with like, man, which one do I share? And I think I'm going to share both cause they're both, uh, equally important, I believe. And so, uh, the first one that I would say is, is, um, leaving work at work. And when you come home, be present. Um, and so, hmm. you know, man, if, 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 if your job is, you know, you always on the phone or you just always have to like check in with people or this and that, listen, uh, if you have children, like I have children, like I've learned even now in this season is like, man, sometimes I just have to go work at the office or I have to go to like a coffee shop and work so I can focus. Uh, because when mm-hmm. I'm home, my kids are like, daddy's home. So if they want some water or something, it's like, instead of going to ask their mom, they're like, daddy's right here. Like our living room is right on the other side of my office. They'll just come knock on this door. And I'm like, it says, do not disturb on this door. Don't come mm-hmm. here. But my point is when I'm here, my kids, they, 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 they want me, you know, they want me to be present. Right. And so even if your work day is done, like you work eight hours and you come home, but it's still one of those jobs where people might text you or reach out like, man, set about boundaries and have a cutoff time. Like I have a cutoff, I have a cutoff time for work. 
Like, you know, we we get messages about stuff all the time, emails. Like, I'm not answering them joints. Slack, I turn my Slack off. Um, in ministry, bro, don't text or call me after six. And everybody knows what date night is. So date night on Friday, ain't nobody calling me or texting me because they know I'm not answering the phone. If it's mm-hmm. like 911, then you need to like call 911 or <laughs> do something else because I got to prioritize the one that I'm with. Like marriage is my first ministry. So hey. she is, you know. That's good. That's good. She's that, the that, first that. ministry. So more hope, than. Hope that. that yeah. Dope. Get that on a shirt. <laughs> um, and so I have to make sure like I prioritize. And then, like I said, when I'm being home man, like be present. You know what I'm saying? Uh, find a balance of like, so you when you come home, you're not like just dead tired to where you can't interact with your kids and it's only like six o'clock, seven o'clock and you can't be, you know, intentionally spending time with them. Um, so yeah, find that balance of when to cut work off, make sure you take the proper steps to make sure that you, you're not so tired that you can't engage with your kids and stuff like that. Put your, turn your phone off, put it down, go put it in another room or something like do those, take those steps, man. It's going to go a long way. And then the second one was, um, don't let everybody, you can't allow everybody to watch your kids. Um, and we, we learned this the hard way a situation happened. I'm not going to get into details about, but, uh, where something happened to my daughter. And in that moment, I learned like, even if you're close with a person, um, that person might have real good intentions, but you can't leave your kids with everybody. Mm. Like, you just can't. You have to really prayerfully choose who watches your kids, you know, who takes care of them. Uh, because things get real, like really fast. And, you know, it could affect you. Um, and so prayerfully, just like we do with everything else, prayerfully, man, like God, who um is good to babysit my kids. Like I, I see this person on the surface, they seem okay, right? They're family, but you just never know. And so, especially with especially with family too. You hear a lot of stories coming out of like like family babysitting situations too, you mm-hmm. know. It's, it's usually, you know, with somebody that's close. So you gotta make sure prayerfully that you uh man are putting your kids in the best environment. So um, you know, kids have you know, you might leave them with an auntie, but that auntie got a son or that auntie got a daughter and you know, things could just go left. So make sure you prayerfully you just can't leave your kids with everybody. Just because they family don't mean that that is a healthy environment or that's the best environment for your kids to be in. And so I've turned away jobs um, because of child care. Uh, my wife has not worked uh, a majority of our marriage because of child care because it was real out here with these kids, man. So just make sure that you're, you know, watching and observing and that you're not just being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like naive when it comes to like, oh man, this is family, this is friends, man. Like it's okay, go over there. You know what I'm saying? It's like no. Um, yeah. So those, those are the, the biggest lessons that I learned. I mean that's good because you want to acknowledge God in whatever you do. And so I mean, like it didn't say don't acknowledge God if you if they family. You know, acknowledge God when you drop off your kids, even with family. Make sure you know you following the leading of the Holy Spirit and and you know you following God's promptings and um. I really, when you said that about leaving work at work, I mean, especially nowadays where it seemed like the the grind culture and, you know, like always, you know, having the side hustle for your side hustle for your side hustle. (laughs) Um, And and I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking hard work, uh, especially, you know, like healthy, healthy hard work or healthy, you know, like just having a healthy work culture in your life that's godly. Like once again, submitting everything to God. But I mean, not letting work become an idol, um, I think is a good thing. And I and I've, I'm, I think I'm still, I think God is still teaching me that. Because especially when I heard I was having a kid, I was like, all right, I got to get a side hustle here. Got to be, I got to start working 10 extra hours a week. I got to start doing this and that. But uh, you know, when you're, when you're saying that about leaving work at work, I remember, you remember that movie, Richie Rich? With with my Macaulay Macaulay Calkin. Yeah, I remember that. We watched that like a few months ago, me and the kids. That all right, that we I grew up, we had that on VHS tape. And I remember me and my sister, we wore that mug out. That was just one of those movies we watched all the all the time growing up. 
I remember there was one scene though, and you remember Richie Rich was a billionaire or a trillionaire, or at least his dad was. And you know, he he's a titan of industry, and you know, he um he has his fingers in many different pies, so he's constantly gone. But I remember this scene, and it just popped up in my mind. It was early in the film, and he had just had Richie, and Richie was growing up, and the dad was in the office on the phone, I think talking with the president or something like that. But one thing the dad and Richie shared was baseball. So while he was on the phone, he had he had a glove in his hand, and he was playing catch with his son. So you know he was saying like, yeah, Mr. President, we'll, we'll trade 12,000 shares of stock. And then he would say, hold on. And then he would catch from, uh, from his son, you know, and then just like, like thank his son and say, man, that was a great throw and then throw it back. So I even like how, to me, that was an example of just being mindful. Like, look, if you do have a demanding job, making sure that you don't have that job to the detriment of being with your kids. You know, it, like my dad would do that. My dad was really good about that. If he got home from work, and he had to work on the car. Like if my, like you, like my mom needed a car that worked so she could take, you know, me and my sister, like to doctor's appointments and do stuff like that. And he had to work on the car. He would always say, Ray, pull up a chair. Tell me about your day. You know, it would never be like, no, I'm, I'm working. You know, I can't, I can't really be bothered with you right now. He would say, man, sit down. Tell me about your day. Tell me what's going on in, in your world, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah. that, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All righty. All righty. So. Let's go to, are you, okay, another another thing, we're, we're getting near the, air, uh, near the end here. So question six, I'm trying to think of a way I can reword this, but you hear a lot of people say in today's culture, um, you know, man, like bringing kids into the world and, you know, you see the way the culture's going, you know, especially Christians, you know, everything. Oh man, is that, is that the end? Is that like, is that the harbinger of doom? And you, know, you got a lot of Christians talking about, you know, like, man, like, you know, you got like you got someone to get all this mess in, in school now and they're trying to t- teach the kids this. They're trying to teach the kids that. And I don't know how to I don't know how I'm going to protect my son. I don't know how I'm going to protect my daughter. You know, there 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 can be a lot of, I think, Christian fear mongering. But mm-hmm. besides the fear monger, I think there can be like like healthy concern from parents. You know, like, man, how can I keep my son or my daughter safe or pure? Which I even think that I even take issue with the whole thing of keeping them pure or keeping them safe. Even God, even Jesus was like, look, if you if you're going to stay. If you like, how did Jesus say, I think he was talking with the disciples, like, I don't pray that you will be delivered from the world, but I pray that God will keep you safe while you're in the world. You remember that when he was on, when he was talking with his with his disciples and I think it was in John 16. And he mm-hmm. was like, look, if I was going to pray that you would be delivered from the world, I would have to pray that you would be taken out of the world. But I pray that God will keep you while you're in the world. But just is that something, you know, you got a daughter who's going into high school. You know, you got like you got kids who are getting older and, you know, boys and girls and, you know, drugs and all the stuff that you hear about on the news every night. Like, how, how do you and your how do you and your wife navigate healthy concern versus fear? You know, guns, buy lots what? of guns, lots of bullets. You know, I looked down at my watch for a second. I heard guns. I looked back <laughs> up like, wait, guns, and just, lots of ammo. Like, you know I what I'm saying? Jerry's whole family, like every one of them, with like with with a Uzi or with, with a with a, and then like the girl, the girls that got little bedazzled guns. You know, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm kidding. Um, no, I don't, I don't fear. Um. As far as like the culture or like raising my kids up in this world, like God has me, he's made me and and placed me here in Chicago for such a time as this. Amen. Right. And so he already knows what's going to happen, what's going to take place. He knows the things that I'm going to battle. He knows the things that my kids are going to battle. My thing is that I'm supposed to, as the verses that we talked about earlier, right? Um, uh, Proverbs uh, 22, verse 6, training up my kids in the way that they should go. Like this is something that has, this is a verse that hasn't come back void in so many people's lives that I've, that I know my own personal life, like growing up in the church, but then rebelling and then coming back, right? And, and Christ meeting me where I'm at. And so, you know, 
we my, I'm pretty sure our parents could have said the same thing about the nineties. Like, oh man, it's nineties, man. It's rap music and you know, it's all this drugs and it's gangs everywhere and all this other stuff. Like, I don't wanna raise no kids in this generation, but it's like we went through things and we learned things and, and look what we are now. You know what I'm saying? And so God has a plan, he has a purpose for why he has us alive during the time yeah. that he has us alive for. Amen. Um, and you know, he he's sovereign and these issues that we facing, they might look a little bit different, but they still are the same. The enemy uses the same tactics, same things, you know, to to try to keep us from from God. And so, yeah, we know that certain things are a lot more open and exposed. But man, I talk to my kids about sin. You know, me and my kids, man, we watch real shows, man. We watch like my six hundred pound life. There's a lot of life lessons. You could teach a sermon every episode of My 600 Pound Life. You could talk to them about, man, like, why is this person, why, how did they get so big? Okay, well, let's talk about it, right? And then you bring the Bible in. Well, they were eating a lot, right? They isolation, isolated themselves away from their family, and they fell into some depression. They didn't lean on God. Like, there, there's so many things in life lessons. And so I'm not afraid to talk to my kids about, like, sin. Because if you don't talk to your kids about sin, when they get exposed to sin, they're gonna be like, "Oh snap! Like, Dad, you ain't you ain't tell me that sin felt so good and that it looked so good and that man it even tastes so good. Like, whoa! Like, Daddy, why why you ain't tell me this? And so, your kids get to a certain age, you gotta you gotta start telling them about sin. You gotta let them know why things are happening the way that they're happening. Like what's going on? Like, you know, we got LGBTQ and so you got all these movies and stuff. They got flags in there and different signs and stuff like that. And it's like, like your kids see that, right? We see that happening in Disney and in some Marvel movies and stuff like that. Like I love Marvel, so I ain't finna stop watching. Like, I'm not, now if they start getting like real ridiculous with some stuff, then obviously, but you know, I know Christians are not like, I'm boycotting Disney. I ain't like, all right, well, God bless you. But you know, me and my kids, man, we waiting to see the next you know, Avengers or whatever. So as for me and my household, we will watch Marvel. We will watch Marvel. <laughs> and so we want to go see first, first we're gonna serve the Lord. Se right. second to that down the list, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy us some Marvel movies. So. Right, right. And so like you know the new Spider Man movie has and I didn't even catch this when we were watching the movie and then I didn't even asked my kids that they catch it. It was uh in Glenn's room there was supposedly like a transgender flag or whatever, right? And I asked my kids like did y'all see anything in there that might be like, you know, that caught y'all attention or that stood out to y'all? Do y'all have any questions about it? And a lot of times it's like, it's like, no, or that thing doesn't offend me. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, if you're around all these gay people, like you'll be gay. And it's like, fam, no, I've been, I had a gay uncle. I got a, a gay sister, uh, my, you know, gay friends. I've never had a urge to be, to be gay. You know what I'm saying? I never had that curiosity. Some people it might, but for me, no. And so my kids, uh, we live in the hood, so we get we see a lot of hood things. Um, you know, they they see the the agenda that Disney's has. Those things don't affect them because I, I warn them and prepare them for. Them. We live in a yeah. fallen world. The enemy is trying to do these things, but these things are wrong according to the word of God. And so we live to please God, uh, so we stay away from these things. Right. And then, you know, the questions get deeper, man. Why is it in movies? Why are they doing this and that? And then we could talk about it on their level. But I, I'm not, you know, to answer your, your question directly. No, I'm not afraid of anything that the culture um, is bringing up or doing. Um, you know, we, we have to be ready for it. We have to be watchful. We have to be awake. That's why the Bible tells us to be to be awake and watch, see what's going on. Um, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'll be like, man, I want to get out of here. Jesus, when you coming back. But. Um, man, you know, I'm never afraid of like my kids, um, you know, what can happen. Uh, it's probably a little bit different for my wife. Like she thinks about the violence and school shootings and stuff like that. And she thinks about that. And it's a real worry. Like you worry about, man, if, man, what if this dude ran up in, you know, if it, it's not that school, could it be my kid's school and what's mm -hmm. going on? And, um, I had a real conversation with somebody about racism and they're like, man, when you get pulled over by the police, are you nervous? And I'm like, no. I've never been like, man, I might die right now because I just got pulled over by the police. I've never had that fear. And I don't say that to like boast or think that like I'm, I'm holier than thou, but 
those are not like, you know, I, I see them and I'm aware of those issues and I'm aware that those things could happen, but it's not a, a fear that I have, even as a black man, when I get pulled over for one, it's probably because I live in Chicago and it's a super liberal state and whatever. Uh, maybe if I was in the South, maybe I might feel a little bit different, but for me, I never, and I've had racial encounters with police, right? In the suburbs and stuff like that. But I just, it's not a fear. Like when I get pulled over, I'm like, all right, man, let me make sure you put your hands out. And, you know, I, I just, I don't think like that I'm going to die. And if I do die, then I know that I'm going to be present with, present with the Lord. Um, so I'm not looking for death. I'm not like, yeah, kill me now so I can see Jesus. But I just, I've learned, I've, I've experienced a lot of things in my life where like things like death and things that can happen, they don't, they don't scare me in that way. It's like, God, your will be done. And I'm just mm -hmm. ready. I want to be ready for when it happens. And I do the same thing with my children. You try, you trust God, or at least you, you've learned, you've learned to continually grow to put your trust in God. Yeah. You especially in that, especially in a situation with my daughter, you know what I'm saying? When I, uh, uh, Shared a little bit about earlier. Like I said, I'm not gonna give all the details, but bro, that had me. I was ready to kill some people, like l literally ready to, like, you know, I was uh, calling some people. Uh, I was ready to literally go to jail because that's how bad the situation was, and that's how angry I was, and even angry mm -hmm. at God. Like, why would you? Why would you let that happen? Like, why? What's going on here? And so that, you know, it showed me that man, like. I have to give all my feelings and my emotions um, to the Lord and I have to trust him. And then I also have to learn how to look on like the bright side of things and say, man, mm -hmm. well, it could, it could have been worse. That's my ringtone for a long time. The Andy Minio song, it could be worse because life could be worse when we look at other countries and what they're dealing with and what they're going through, man, it could be a lot worse for us in America. And so yeah, that's just my, my thought process behind the things that's going on in the culture. That's that's what we call a Selah moment right there. That was good. Um man, yeah, just just trusting God. And um I don't I don't know if I even want to comment. I, I would just say like I don't I never want to be arrogant to think or I try not to be arrogant to think like take taking the kids out of the equation us being able to keep ourselves, you know, I know it says in the word that it's God who began the good work in you and he'll keep you till the day of redemption. He'll keep you. Cause a lot of people don't forget worrying about your kids. You, you think about how to keep yourself clean, how to keep yourself pure in this world. But that that's God's job. You know, your, your, your job is just to keep your eyes on him and, and he'll direct your path. So, I mean, but you, yeah. you said, I, I felt, you know, I felt, the Holy Spirit and what you were saying. So thank you for sharing that on the real. No problem. Um, we can, yeah. I mean, we're, we're at the end of the question. I know. So the last one, the last one, what do you like most? I can combine this with the earlier question about, you know, I was going to ask what's your proudest moment as a father, but I'll just, I'll just go to seven and say, what do you like most about being a dad? Or, um, yeah, what do you like most about being a dad? I also have what do you like least about being a dad? So let's start with that. What do you like least? I don't even know, like, or what's what's something that you because I don't want to I don't want to have the negative connotation to that. Cause anyone can say like changing diapers. Or anyone yeah, can say no, like, I, like sometimes I, if you if your daughter, if you go to give your daughter a hug, I remember you told me that you went to give your daughter a hug, you know, her being like a a, a teenager, it's like, oh, you know, back up off me. So it's like it's yeah. like the little like that. So I didn't want to dwell on the negative, but I just wanted to give you a chance. No, to I, I, I think if people say that they don't have things that they dislike about whatever it is that they do, they can have their dream job, but I'm pretty sure it's some about that dream job that you don't like. Uh, and so same thing with parenting. There is one thing that I don't like. Um, and that thing is, is when we go out as a family, how much money I have to spend. So, you know, din dinners for me ain't cheap. Like the cheapest place that we can go eat, like as a family is Denny's. And that's still hey. like, that's still like a hundred bucks. It's seven, of, we, we seven of us. 
And my kids now, they don't, they're not eat my, my two, my, well, my three oldest, they ain't in the kids meal no more. They like, yo, what you, oh, just kids meal, man? What are adult dinners? So. No, nah, blank, blank that. Y'all need to eat them, <laughs> kids, y'all need to eat them kids meals. Y'all so. Y'all need to get down on that. Jeez. So when we go out anytime as a family, whether we going out to dinner or whether we going to like Six Flags or whether we going anywhere, like it's going to be money. So I have to like plan and be uh, very strategic about how we're going to make this work. Because I got to think about gas. I got to think about the entry fee. And then inside of the entry fee, I got to think about where well, they're going to want snacks. They're going to want food. So then I got to feed them. So when you think about like Six Flags, Man, Six Flags is a trip that I don't want to do. <laughs> it costs so much money. We're gonna, we gonna split this. we gonna split this funnel cake seven ways. Dang it! Exactly. So it's like yo, I'm gonna buy a big drink and everybody get a sip. <laughs> we go past this mug around. <laughs> and so now you take one sip and then if someone tries taking too much of a sip, you say, "Hey, hey, hey!" Now. And so even fun. even if I even if I was rich, I still think I would like just dislike how much money i love the moments i love the memories and i love going out with my family but i don't like the money that i have to spend especially now in this inflated world that we live in where everything costs so much i was thinking about penny candy the other day my my uh i forgot what kid wanted some candy and i was like man i remember when i was a kid it was penny candy you get 25 pieces of candy for a quarter and now it's like 50 cent for like 10 pieces and i was like hold up wait wait shout out because shout out to five below you ever been to five below yeah i've been to five below anytime look i I ran up in five below one time it was probably during christmas so i was looking for some cheap gifts five below was dope though because you go to the candy aisle and they have like all different kinds of candy lemon heads twizzlers individually wrapped and it's like each piece is like 10 cent. Mm. So I guess I kind of maybe I'll file that away for if I ever have like a gang of kids. I'm like, y'all want some candy? We running up and five below. Each of y'all pick like five pieces a piece and put them in a the bag. And then, you know, I think that's like what, 250? If if my math is correct, like a mathematician is probably watching this like, man, y'all suck. But it's, it's a, Well, no, you grew up in the suburbs. I was going to say that's that CPS education, but never mind. Um, <laughs> that's, that new, that's that new math. Okay. <laughs> so, um, we still got audio. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, we got audio. I was, I was, I was yelling at my kids. <laughs> Man, th- this is gold. God is like, y- y'all need to see how parenting works real time. In real time, straight up. All right, so. Um, yeah, that's the least thing that I like about parenting is just, I got a big family, man. There's seven of us. And so I have to, you know, plan and save and really be, you know, a good steward of my resources, man. When, even when it comes to planning out family trips. So, but let's go to the mountaintop. What, what, what are, what are, what's a high or some of the highs? You know? Uh, the thing that I like the most is what you, is that what you asking? Yeah. So the thing that I I love about being a dad is the unconditional love I receive from my kids, even after I have to discipline them. Like I can, you know, go from like you just take Dash for example, who's my youngest. I could, you know, he's young, so he's he's in the curious stage, and he wants to run across the street, or he wants to, you know, uh, touch things that he shouldn't touch, and some things cause for me to be like, you got to spank their hand. And sometimes pain is the best reminder that you shouldn't do something. So it's like, it's like, hey, don't do that. And he might run off. He might cry. But, like, I could pick him up and I still get the warm embrace. And I still get, Daddy, I love you. And I still get kisses. And that is the best part for me of being a father is the fact that, like, it's just this unconditional love that your kids have for you as a parent, even when you're disciplining them. Um Especially when they know like where you, that you're coming from is from uh, a loving place. You're coming from mm-hmm. a place of like, I'm not trying to abuse you. I'm not just you know just trying to whoop you just to whoop you. Um, but this is an unconditional love, man. That uh, we should have towards our heavenly Father, right? When 
he has to deal with us and you know he's telling us to be good stewards over our money and then we spending our money and we on things we shouldn't and now we broke and then we mad like god why you didn't warn me or why you didn't do this or we do something we take a job that and we like god says i i told you not to take that job right and then all these things are starting to happen right this is uh the call this is the effect of our, of our disobedience and now all these things are happening um we 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 get mad right that we're going through stuff but we can always go to god and he's always there to just come here I told you not to do it you ain't listen but i'm here come on and he and he's just there to give us hugs and that's just been my experience with my kids man it's just this unconditional love uh you know even with my 14 year old even if she's getting to the teenager stage where it's like you know i try to give her a hug i was a chaperone on the six flag strip so i'm like hey you know and she's just kind of like and i felt a little bit i felt the way about her like are you gonna just slide from under my hood? Like, like I embarrass you for real. But you know, it's just this loving and forgiveness and compassion. And I'm like, as a daddy in that moment, I, I just took it on the chin. But she heard about it in the car. Um, right. but um, yeah, I just love the unconditional love that kids give give man. Uh, they parents. I like I like that because because it's like I've heard I've heard that that when you have kids, uh, you understand. I've heard that from Christians that when you have a kid, you understand God better, or you understand God as a father more. Like, did did you find that? You know, you that was your experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I understand. Like, when I'm when I'm thinking about like something that my kid did wrong, and like I have to discipline them, and they might do something that's just really made me angry. But then I gotta. It always helps me to remember, like, man, I did the same thing to God. Like I, I I messed up. I was disobedient. I rebelled. All the things that he he sent people to tell me, or I read about it in his word, and just different things. And I still decided not to do uh to to do what I knew to do, what was right. And he still and he's still there. So I, when I always discipline my kids, I'm always like, man, God, I did the same thing. So that's where the love and the mercy and the grace comes from from me to my children. It's because man, I. I was a kid once. I'm still I'm still a kid learning. At 34 years old, I'm still, you know, trying to uh learn and grow and I'm still making mistakes and God is still there like, you know, hey son, uh let's do better. And so he doesn't like throw me in hell. <laughs> he doesn't like send down some type of lightning to strike me. Um he's there. So, you know, always Reminded me it was when I deal with my kids. Like their kids, they even make mistakes. They don't know everything. They're still learning and growing. So we got to be and, gentle and compassionate. And you think too, like with, with, with your daughter, like um, how she kind of slid away from you. Like you think about how how we've done that to God. Like you know, we may be embarrassed to speak about him or or or, or represent our faith. And then like you can feel, I felt really guilty about that in the past. But you know. God never left me. Like you didn't look at your daughter and say, I renounce your daughterness. I renounce your you being my daughter. You gotta find your own ride home. You know, you still love your daughter. You, I mean, y'all y'all talked about it. But she did not stop being your daughter and you still she is still your daughter and we're still God's children, even when we may feel some type of way or may not rep him as, as best we can. He'll he'll work with us, he'll he'll help us. You know, he he doesn't leave us, you know. Or forsake us, you know. Amen, amen. Man, I'm a, I'm at I'm at the end of my questions. I was gonna, cause one that was wonderful. Um, that was that was not worldly. It was common sense, but it was not worldly wisdom. That was godly wisdom that that Mister that Mister Cook get uh, Mister Dairy Cooks gave to us. So. Not just for me, but for all the fathers out there, for anyone thinking of becoming a father, I hope you really take take those words to heart. And um, lastly, I guess I would ask Mr. Cooks to, to, I mean, any any parting words of wisdom, but then I would ask him also to pray for us, pray for all the fathers out there, for any people who may have been, when they hear the word father, maybe they're a little bit hurt by it. Um and they don't even know how to think about being a father. So just any words of wisdom and then please, if you would pray, pray for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some, some basic things that I want to leave with fathers, you know, expecting fathers, people who want to be fathers is first and foremost, man, 
seek to be understanding. Like seek Amen. to understand your wife, seek to understand your children, um, because you got you you have to be able to understand where people are coming from, why people are. Hold on, I'm sorry. Hey. What you see now is Derry being understanding in real time. You better not delete this. You better not delete that because you just said seek to seek to be understanding, and then you just heard the mic cut. Just like. Oh man! So yeah, um, but back to what I was saying: seek to be understanding, um, just as a father, man, because your kids are going to be going through things that they might. Either they can't articulate it, or they might be in a in a situation where they're refusing to articulate it for whatever reason. And as fathers, man, we need to be, you know, uh, quick to listen and slow to speak, oh, right? Slow, slow, and when we do speak, we need to make sure that our words are loving, that our voice has compassion, um, and that we're just trying to, you know, I want to understand this problem uh, as a man. We naturally come in with the hammer, like, how can I fix it? How can I fix it? Like, what, what's going on? Okay, I got you. And then sometimes we just need to take a step back and just listen and be understanding. And that's just a principle for, for marriage and as, as a father. And so, um, yeah, just seek to understand. And then um, my last one would be, is you don't need to be rich to have kids. You don't need to be a millionaire to have kids, man. Um, when I when I first had my when I had my first daughter, I was working at Target and I was going to school full time. And then, like in like a like a foolish person, I stopped going to school because I figured like, hey man, I need to work, you know, even more so that I can make all this money so I can take care, you know, uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. But then I got to take care of this baby and I got to get all this money. And then that just didn't work out the way I plan for it. And all that was because I, I seen people, I heard people say, Oh man, you need got to make sure, man, you making, you know, babies are expensive and this and that. And to a degree, there is some truth to that as far as like babies being expensive, but it's not expensive in the extreme view that people paint. You're not spending thousands of dollars a week. You're not even spending hundreds of dollars a week on your baby. You might spend, you know, some diapers, you might, if, 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 if your wife is not breastfeed, you might have to buy some formula. Now, obviously, it's a little bit more expensive now because of inflation, but, uh, you know, $30 a can, that'll last you whatever a week. So just say you're spending like $50 uh, a, a week, every week and a half or something like that. Uh, if you have a village around you, like my first kid, we didn't have to buy clothes for her for like two years. She had, every, she had everything she needed. Like, you know, we got blessed. With Dorian was the same thing. We got blessed, man. We still getting blessed with Dash. Like somebody just gave us a whole bag of clothes for him. And so it's not that expensive. Yeah, medical bills can happen, stuff like that. But it's it, you don't need to be a millionaire. And I got five kids and I'm nowhere near a millionaire. So just take it. And I live in Chicago, so it's super expensive. So I'm just telling you from somebody who is literally, I'm living it right now. I'm, I'm in it right now. Um, times can be hard. I'm not saying don't plan or don't save, you know, or don't be a good steward over your resources. But what I'm saying is don't let the fear of, of not having enough money scare you away from the blessing that awaits you that, uh, of being a father. Because yeah. um, God knows what you need. And um, as we, you know, he's going to provide for you. He's provided for me. He's provided for my family. We've never went without, even when we were homeless at a point in time, uh, which was just, that was my fault. That wasn't God's fault. That wasn't God's lack of, of providing. That was me being stupid and putting my family in situations that I shouldn't have put them in. Um, and so, yeah, God is going to provide. And even in the midst of my stupidness, he still provided for me. You know what I'm saying? And so 
Don't allow money to scare you, right? Plan properly, be a good steward of your resources, you know, do things in, in decency and in order as the Bible tells us to, but you don't need to, I got to make six figures a year to have, to have one kid. No, I got five and I don't even make that much. So just, you know, you're okay. And you can still be ambitious, right? Still, you know, if, if it's something that you want to do on the side because you want to plan for a trip, obviously, you know, I have ambitions and goals to make a little bit more money because the, the, the family trips get a little bit more expensive, right? Like my kids want to go to Paris. Lord help me. <laughs> That's like just, I think just the airfare is like 2,500 for all of us. It might be even more now from last time that I checked, but that's just for the airfare. And then I still got to get there in hotels and then food. So dude, that could easily be $5,000, uh, flight, you know, a trip. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you know, you gotta plan accordingly and do these things. And so, um, but if you're only thinking about like, hey, I can't go on a, a trip or I can't, I can't do this and this because I, there are so many memories that you can make just in the backyard or at the park with your kids, man. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in this world telling you, you got to go to this place. You got to go to that place. Um, again, nothing wrong with wanting to, but you don't need those things to happen to be a good dad. You don't need to make, you know, six figures a year to be a good dad, right? Um, make sure that you're being faithful with the little, and then God will bless you with much, much more. And um, yeah, so those will be the two things that I would just say, meditate on those, seeking to, uh, seeking to understand in all situations. And then don't, you don't need to be rich to have kids. Say la, say la, my brother. Yeah. And so I'm gonna pray for us, man, and then we'll, we'll get up out of here. Uh, uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I just lift up all the fathers, um, all the future fathers, the fathers um, that are around not uh, around right now, God. And um, Lord, I pray that you will bless them, God. I pray that you would uh, give them the desires of their hearts according to your your plans and purposes for their life, Lord. And I pray that they would just uh, seek to understand God um, as they uh, seek to understand their wives and how they operate and why they do the things that they do and that we can just meet them with love and compassion god i pray um that as men you called us to provide so i pray for jobs and i pray for doors and opportunities to be open to men who uh who need um promotions right who need a job right whether whatever job that is our first priority is to make sure that we provide and so i pray for for dads to rise up to to go out here and get jobs um so that we can provide um, a home and a safe environment for our children. And um, I pray that we would um, we will be uh, that we would protect our families as well. God, as, as, as fathers, we're called to um, protect. And so I pray uh, that we would not just protect them physically, but that we would learn how to protect um, our families spiritually that uh, it's spiritual warfare out here. And so I pray that man, every day that we will pick up our sword, which is your word, and that we will dive into it. God, I pray that we will seek your face on a daily basis, that we will rise early and um, consult with our maker on the plans that he has for us and the things that we need to do. And I pray that uh, every man would have um, it's a level of discernment, God. And for those who aren't walking with you, I pray that they would recognize who their father is and I pray that they will come into a real relationship with their Heavenly Father because it's one of the most beautiful relationships that you can have. I, for so long, struggled to understand um, any relationship with a man because I didn't understand, you know, how God can be such a loving father. But um, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for opening up my eyes and thank you for healing me of my past hurts of being a fatherless child. And thank you that I have a relationship with you now. So. Lord, again, we thank you for um, the opportunity to come together and talk about fatherhood, something that is missing. We pray for the fatherless children um, and Lord, have your way in this world, God, and, and do what you're going to do with this podcast. Um, in Jesus name, we love you. We thank you for sending your son to die for us, your children and our sins. We give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen.